What are we cooking today? Or better yet, what's for lunch? For those of you who don't know me yet, I'm Nadia Frini Becker, and this is Nadia Cooks. So everyone, thank you so much for listening to me today. It's a pleasure having you all on the show. And I have the pleasure of talking to Elena Comporis. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. (laughs) Elena is a registered nutritionist and she's here to talk to us more about all of the three pillars of well-being, I believe, your mental health, your body health, and of course, your food health. Elena, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) Yes, good to have you here. Now, we were chatting before. We're going to tell us your departures and your arrivals. You are born in New York, raised in New York, not in New York. (laughs) (laughs) My departure and arrival is here. (laughs) And so, and your parents are of Greek ascendancy, correct? Yes, yes. My mom was born here in America, but she's of Greek descent. And my father came here as a young teen and they've both you know, really built a great, successful life and family. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're still very in in touch with our Greek roots, which I love. That's very nice. Have they always cooked like every Greek family does? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say more my aunts Ah, and my grandmothers than than Uh my mom. My dad really likes the Greek cooking. (laughs) Okay. Now that he's retired, we'll go over all the time and he's always making something nice Greek food. (laughs) Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. So I also have Greek friends and uh, they went to Greece this year and they are all rubbing in my face that they <laughs> got the best olive oil. And I say, no, come on, don't do this to us. We can still get good stuff in here. But Elena, so when I met you was at Laughing Buddha, I think, yeah. many years ago, you were our Zoom instructor. And then you moved over with Chrissy. You have always been on the also fitness side of the well-being. Yeah. And you have your, your dance studio in Astoria. How did that happen? Well, I really love this part of my story. I, I have a little notebook that I started when I was in, I think, fourth or fifth grade, designing my future dance studio that I would one day own. Um, And I still have it. And I just, I mean, it was so silly and like, you know, obviously no idea of what the real Uh life would entail. But I always go back to that because I've always loved being a teacher. I would set up my classroom for my stuffed animals. I loved, I just always loved being with around children and playing and working with them. And, you know, I was dancing my whole life. And then once I went to high school, I went to Bronx Science, which was like very academically rigorous. So I actually had to stop dancing for a bit. In my college years, I started teaching Zumba because I was studying nutrition and exercise. Mm -hmm. I still like love dancing, but it was kind of like not as much in my brain anymore. I was focusing on getting, you know, becoming a dietitian and doing that part. And then I started working at a gym and I took a Zumba class one day and I like fell in love with it. This was before it was like popular here. Uh This is like 2008 or seven and you know at the gym they're like oh we would love it for our our front desk people to be certified in something and i was like have you ever heard of zumba and they're like no what's that i was like it's the best thing ever so i finally got certified and then that's how i really just started getting back into dancing yeah. but combining it with fitness mm-hmm. and the degree that i was going for as well and then you know just i was working with adults more than kids and then i missed working with kids and then my professional career with nutrition, I I did pediatrics. And then it just was like, this is kind of just circling around what I've wanted Mm -hmm. to do my whole life, right? Dancing, nutrition and health and wellness, children. And then, you know, one day my cousin and I, who's my business partner, we just were like, let's do it. Like I was, it was just like, I think it was my sister's birthday party. We were sitting on in the living room and we're like, let's go, let's try it. And uh, now we're, we're five years later. And Five years already. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it was just like two years ago when you opened it and then you had I your know. first show, but okay. So it's hard now. I'm not going to yeah. talk about the pandemic yet. Just having a business on its own, it's the hardest thing on the planet. I say, you know, people think that the job is hard. Wait until you have your own business. Seriously. <laughs> it's 10 times harder. So when you see patients, what do you look yeah. for? I think it's like you mentioned earlier in the intro, like these three pillars of health and well-being are so key. And sometimes I think as a society in general, we focus on eat right, right? Like don't eat carbs, don't eat blah, 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 don't eat this. And then exercise, you need to be like hitting it hard at the gym every day right and then we a lot of times we neglect like that that mental well-being right like so i've always approached working with my patients everything in moderation per se Mm -hmm. but like do something because you like it if you enjoy a food it's not a bad food it's okay like you know maybe we don't want to stuff ourselves we want to be more Mm -hmm. mindful about what we're eating and how much but Mm -hmm. i hate the whole concept of good foods and bad foods because that Mm -hmm. just 
continues to create this bad mentality towards food. And as someone yes. who cooks, like you pour so much love, love. and good ingredients into food, yeah. like it's okay. Just, you know, you don't need the whole pot. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right? So Ellen, I think you just hit on one thing that's very important. It's ingredients, right? So if you cook, you really add ingredients. And one thing that I always have a joke about is when people come to my house and they open a pantry, all they find is ingredients, right? You will never find a finished product except for dark chocolate. Or, <laughs> yeah. But it's it's not a chocolate bar. It's not a candy bar. It's not, I don't have crackers. I don't have cookies. I don't have any of that stuff. If we want it, we have to make it from scratch. That's but awesome. I think it is more of, you're not going to stuff your face with ingredients <laughs> because you need to make something. But it's, you're being mindful of when, for example, you go to the supermarket and you know what to buy. Or at least you find help, right? We come to professionals like you who will sit down and talk to us and say, mm -hmm. let's see what you're eating. Let's see what you can cut off of your diet. Now, do you recommend people to start by cutting things off? Besides the exercising not so hard and the sleeping very well with no pills? Yeah. <laughs> For me, I mean, the way I approach it is really client-centered in terms okay. of what they feel they need to work on, where they might be at, because something that I might feel I want them to work on might not align with how they're feeling or where they're at in that journey, right? Like, it's hard because I feel like going to nutrition school, and this is stuff that I teach now because I adjunct at some colleges, you know, I remember being in school and be like, well, no, this is what you have to do. And this is what you can't do. Like, that's just what you learn. But then when you're working with clients, they're just going to shut you out. Because again, like we were saying, food is so emotional. Like you put so much into it. We eat when we're happy. We eat when we're sad. We eat when we're mad. We eat when we're drunk, right? Like there's, there's just so many other things tied to food that for someone else to tell you, okay, you can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this kind of builds a, a wall wow. between the client and the dietitian or nutritionist mm -hmm. and and you can't really help them as much as you'd like to in terms of cutting out foods i try to educate right like there's a lot of misconceptions about food mm -hmm. out there and that's kind of the only thing i'll educate on like mm -hmm. you know when people see the low fat foods or low sugar uh -huh. or something i'll just kind of talk through okay well it's low fat but it's probably higher in mm -hmm. xyz mm -hmm. chemicals carbs other sugars to help that flavor mm -hmm. they want to do that like i'm the person that recommends just drink less soda if you can't cut it out completely and some mm -hmm. people don't think that's a great way but i'd rather the it's client starting work point. for is it yeah then like i can't believe they told me to cut soda <laughs> i'll never go back there and yes. then you've not only lost the client but they've probably even lost their their faith like yeah. oh what are you gonna tell me oh i know everything and you just want to cut foods out of my diet i'm like well no one thing i think it's important is sometimes people don't know how to read ingredients right they don't know yeah. how to read the labels and you know this better than anyone so in the back of the package purposely sugars and grams and everything else is in pounds it's hard for somebody to know how much sugar can i take every day how much sodium can i take every day sometimes Sometimes looking into the micronutrients is one thing versus what you're saying before is looking into your whole diet, right? And right. see how you will start your mindset, how you're going to start changing your mindset. Yeah. But talking about diets, is it crazy to go 16 hours without eating <laughs> or is it normal? Depends on each one's ability to store fat. What is your take on to these? Yeah. I call the crazy <laughs> diets, the moon diet, the rock. I don't know, but there's a the soup <laughs> diet. There's so many. I remember growing up, I was a dancer too, right? So yeah. I, I danced my whole life and I was always a chubby one just because I like to eat. And, <laughs> and my parents thought that, you know, it's good. I'm eating, I'm growing. Right. But I remember once I went to a nutritionist and the gentleman was telling me that I could eat little pieces of cheese and I could have one little piece of chocolate every day. And I remember going back to the dance studio and being so happy and telling my friends and say, hey, this guy lets me eat a little chocolate and he lets me eat a little cheese. But I think he started cutting everything else and just giving me those two rewards. And I think that that might be the reason why I didn't want to come back after a while, right? Because yeah. like you just said, if you cut, cut, you, you're just pushing, you're creating a wall and you're not letting people come back. Absolutely. Is there a way to remedy the situation? I think so. I think there definitely, like going back to your, the question on the diets, like there's a lot more nutrition education now. And even going back to how you said the food labels, those have recently changed in the past year. Like now they have the added right within the sugars category, even though, yeah, everything is in grams still. Okay. The added sugars versus okay. like natural, you know, let's say if it's a pasta, uh -huh. you always say total carbohydrates, sugar zero, but let's say it's another, 
I now it will say added sugars zero potentially that there's no mm-hmm. added sugar because that's what we want to target versus bottle of iced tea or soda mm-hmm. the added sugars is going to be full amount of carbs so learning that differentiation between what carbohydrates are and what sugars are and what added sugars are is really good and these changes to the label while I don't think it's great like it's not the perfect label it's mm-hmm. it's much better than it was okay so that's really exciting but yeah I mean I'm seeing now just within field of even medicine and and nutrition, there is a large push. Doctors and nurses are required to take nutrition courses so they can really have a good understanding and help their patients learn this information. I mean, unfortunately, I think we're always going to have food marketing that mm-hmm. pushes people towards, you know, whatever the product, right? Yeah. The, the product more money, yeah. Yeah. But I think there really is there's a shift in our society for many. Yeah. Access you have to information and, uh-huh. and learning and getting all that. I think there is a shift. Do you think it will be good for the extracurricular activities like the dance studios and the sports places to come up also with some sort of education classes or involving the parents more do you see this as a change do you see this as being positive do you see this being in effect in the near future i hope so i mean there's you know children that get into sports even though they can be very fit and healthy they're also extremely prone to developing eating disorders even just because their age and where they are you know their brain development is right a peer pressure and influence of their peers is so key that you want to make sure that they're being surrounded by good information regarding nutrition So like for me personally, just because I have that background, I do a nutrition class with my dancers every year just to go through like what's a proper snack, when you should eat before dance, after dance, because it's, you know, timing in terms of what you're eating and when is, is huge, right? Like you can't eat a high fat meal, even if it's like a candy bar, like eating something high fat right before you dance is not smart. But mm-hmm. after dance or any sport, you want something with a good mixture of protein and carbs to help you recover, right? But a lot of people are scared of carbs or love fat now because of keto or hate fat because like it's so much that people don't know and and I think parents also don't know sometimes give their children the wrong information which is fine like if you don't go to school for nutrition yeah. know what is out there right yeah, I understand and I think it makes a lot of sense you know I, it's funny the other day we had one of Stella's friends over and then the girl said oh I'm so happy we're gonna have a barbecue today and I say yeah it's summer you know it's all that's why you're here you can stay outside we're not we're gonna be far up for a part, blah, blah, blah. And then the girl says, so when you cook, do you buy the good meat or do you know how to cook it? And I really, <laughs> I felt, I'm, it was a cute question, but at the same time, I'm thinking, this is the concept that she has. You know, it's either you buy the expensive stuff or you know how to do it. And it doesn't mean that just because you bought the expensive stuff, it means that you know how to do it. So even if you've heard about the keto diet and the this and that and the blah, blah, blah diet, it doesn't mean that you know how to follow it, right? It doesn't, right. Know, it doesn't mean that you have that knowledge. Knowledge. And so yeah. I'm glad that we have folks like you who can educate yeah. and be more more. Right. And I mean, like in terms of like keto and fasting, like there's science behind it. Like these things are scientifically proven to work. But I think it's ta- been taken a lot out of context in terms of like so many people are trying keto and intermittent fasting and mm-hmm. not necessarily monitoring certain things or even being under a nutritionist or a doctor's eye because there are potential consequences. And things like keto and fasting really work when you're an athlete. So if you're not really exercising and exercising right, it could be dangerous. That's very good to know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's eye-opening. I didn't know. So thank you. See, I'm sorry. Ignorance. Now I'm learning. And I hope everyone is learning. <laughs> El- Elena, we have a few minutes before we go. I need your opinion on a good friend of mine, Speedos, the nutritionist. I was asking him about my modern mom. She's intolerant to many things, right? And he was telling me that some of these intolerances come from the fact that your gut is connected to your brain. Yeah. And then so many times, of course, some food might not sit well in your stomach, but you might have stress or other issues that will prevent your gut from working properly. Can you tell us more? So within the the gut, there are these little bacteria, right? Okay. Our good bacteria. And now with all this emerging science on it, it's so crazy to me because like some years ago, people would do colon cleanses, right? All their good bacteria is- You're killing them. (laughs) Right, like that, there's more bacteria in our gut than there are cells in our entire body. Wow. So to completely disregard our intestines and 
and the power they have in our bodies is completely crazy. There's so much more action going on in those few feet of intestine mm. than everywhere else. And there's so much science coming out about that just in terms of what they control, how you will react to foods, and just your general health, immunity. I mean, there's there's so much emerging science on it. It's so fascinating. If you just type in like gut microbiome, there's just so much information because like even things like, um, you know, if you get jittery drinking coffee or not mm -hmm. is like something that they've discovered within your genes and within the biome that like there's an indicator of that. Like if you can metabolize coffee mm -hmm. or not, it's amazing. Yeah, that's so nice. That's so good. And I have to say it brings me memories from when we were talking about the labels before. And then of course, seventh to me, seventh grade science when yeah. we, I, at least I learned in school how to calculate the amount of calories that you had for breakfast, for lunch and for dinner. Yeah. Right. And it was so much fun. And then also how all of the digestive system works and how you should sleep first on your left side because right that's how the food is going yeah and, and all of it but I, I think sometimes it's said that we see that not everyone has that knowledge with good professionals and good folks behind the dance studios who teach nutrition you know? <laughs> it is becoming a better world so elena before we go oh, i want to thank you for your time i want to invite you to come back for more okay so we can talk more about all of the other stuff that we really want to talk the very polemic stuff yes. <laughs> we need to start slowly but surely so people start understanding the difference in diets and in foods and you know just to learn more and because something like you said before just because it says no fat or zero sugar doesn't mean that it doesn't have all of the bad chemicals behind absolutely it's that but wait you have to do one thing that everyone does in a podcast yeah. before you go you have to tell us your weekly menu what have you cooked for the past seven days if you remember hey okay. let's see so today i just made couscous with zucchini and chickpeas okay uh, and they're very high weight you're a nutritionist you know this they they have a very <laughs> um, high amount of iron iron yes yeah. just like most of the beans yeah grains yeah, yeah, yeah. yes what else last night i did not cook we were at my parents and they had okay. pork and like green beans. Ah, uh, the other day I made chicken with spinach. Oh, so we started getting our meats and, and our eggs from a local farm. Nice. So, I, cause I, I, tri I typically don't cook meat a lot. Mm -hmm. I need to get some recipes from you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but when I do, we, we get the meat from there. So it was, mm -hmm. it was amazing. It's from a farm out in Long Island. And uh, so it was chicken with romesco sauce and spinach. Mm -hmm. And then, then it was the weekend. I, I didn't cook, we ordered out. <laughs> Um, no, no lamb, no potatoes, no <laughs> spanakopita. Come on, Elena. Oh, I had spanakopita last week because it was my husband's name day and my aunt made okay. it. She okay. She makes the best pita. So thank you so much for your time. We greatly appreciate it. And we hope yeah. to see you soon. 